to have the child and family. We greet everybody, and we thank you for joining us at Hebrew Readers Church. I'm your brother, Zach Wan. This is your brother, Kasafo. Uh We have a great lesson for everybody still in the men's series. We hope everybody's been following the men's series so far. Um, this lesson today is the same face man. Uh, if you have not seen the other videos, there's about three. Well, there are three other ones we did, or two? It's three. Three other videos before, prior to this one. Uh, definitely go and check them out so that you can get an understanding of, of everything when it comes to the men. And also, like we said before, these lessons aren't just for the men. They're also for the women and building the whole family. So definitely watch the videos and check them out and get the information. The highest graces. Uh, we hope everybody has been enjoying their Shabbat day today. Uh, Shabbat Shalom to everyone all over the world. And without further ado, Brother Kapsafo, you have anything before we get going? Um, if you need the PDF notes to the lessons, uh, just send us an email or so we can get that to you. All right. And that, praise God to you. All right. Let's get going. This lesson is to learn how we are to be shamefaced men as examples of believers. It's a process to remove the beam out of our own eyes to see clearly, but through singleness of heart, we can attain. Can you read Testament of Issachar, chapter 3, and chapter 4, and chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, please? Okay. The Testament of Issachar, chapter 3, verse 1. When therefore I grew up, my children... I walked in a rightness of heart, and I became as a husbandman for my father and for my brethren. And I brought in fruit from the field according to their season. And my father blessed me, for he saw that I walked in rectitude before him. And I was not a busybody in my doings, nor envious and malicious against my neighbor. I never slandered anyone, nor did I censor the life of any man walking as I did in singleness of I. So there we see, brothers and sisters, to be single, we have to walk in rectitude, which will get us a blessing from our Father, and not be a busybody in our doings, not be envious nor malicious against our neighbor, and never slander anyone, nor censor any man's life. These are the characteristics and mannerisms of someone that walks in singleness of I. Continue, please. Verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 1. And now hearken to me, my children, and walk in singleness of your hearts. For I have seen it in all that is well-pleasing to Ahia. The single-minded man covereth not gold, nor overreaches not his neighbor. He longeth not after manifold dainties. He delighteth not in varied apparel. He doeth not desire to live a long life, but only waiteth for the will of Elohim. This man is well pleasing to Ahaya. That singleness of heart. This is some um, area we need growth in so that we may attain. Continue, please. For he excuse me. And the spirits of deceit have no power against him. For he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. There is no that's end. essential. Oh, excuse me, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was saying that's essential. Seeing that being single of heart, also we abstain from fornication. Continue, please. There is no envy in his thoughts. No malicious person maketh his soul to pine away, nor worry with insatiable desire in its mind. For he walketh in for he walketh in singleness of soul, and beholdeth all things in a rightness of heart, shunning eyes made evil through the error of the world, lest he should see the perversion of any of the commandments of Ahia. This is essential for us, brothers, to attain to the singleness of heart. 
Zach, well, what did it mean? Um, he overreacheth not his neighbor. I'll make sure. I mean that he doesn't uh he doesn't cross his neighbor. Mm-hmm. Okay, he don't trespass against him. Right. All right, excellent. And what he said No malicious person maketh his soul to pine away. There was something on that part. Um, it said there is no envy in his thoughts, right? No malicious person maketh his soul to pine away, right? So he doesn't think evil in his thoughts, and nobody who does evil maketh his his soul to pine away. So he doesn't hearken on things. He, I mean, he doesn't. Um, what's the word? Um, he doesn't harp harp on things, right? Mm-hmm. He don't render evil for evil, even in his mind. Right. Like a, a person is doing wrong to him or doing wrong at all doesn't affect him. Like he doesn't sit there and get offended by it. Right. And get frustrated about it. Or get fired up by still thinking about whatever it was that that person did. Mm, so he doesn't give in to angry temper. Right. And his long suffering forbearing towards people. All right, I want to make sure that was well understood. That's essential for us, for singleness. And shunning eyes made evil through the error of the world. You see? And we, Are you asking me about that one? That? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. I thought you were just about to say something about it. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I was trying to find the other part I wanted to catch. Uh, let me see. It says, for he walketh in singleness of soul, and beholdeth all things out rightness of heart. Shunning eyes may evil through the error of the world, so he's shunning his eyes. He's not looking at everything so that he doesn't get corrupted. Mm. So the eyes are the window to the soul. He guarded himself well. All right. Awesome. Lest he shouldn't see the perversion of any of the commandments of Ahaya. All right. So that's essential for being single, minding what we um, expose ourselves to seeing. All right. All right. Thank you. Praise Ahaya for knowing that. And that's an interesting part of that's an interesting part of this because um, a lot of people they go into the mindset of you know this is my reality or this is how things are in my life. Like, I see these things. You know, you may not have to deal with those things, but I do. All of that is a choice. To to deal with those things that you see on a regular basis is a choice. You can always change what you see or change what you, uh, what you, what environment you put yourself in, you know. Like, like the, everything is so accessible nowadays. So hmm. if you're if you're surrounded around say you live in the hood and you're surrounded around um anger and and you know and um what's the word? Um not harm, but um violence, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. There's always a place where you can go to get away from it. Like whether it be a rec center, whether it be this, whether it be that, like there's some place that you can go to get away from that because things are so accessible nowadays. It's easy to go somewhere. Yeah. It's easy to do, to get into something else. You know, even the, the outlet of, of a lot of the people in the hood, using that as the example, a lot of the kids started getting into skateboarding. So they found an outlet to get away from what it was that was – being negative in their life. So right. we really have to strive to get away from that negativity and not accept it. And and that's where I'm getting to. All right. It's also interesting that he said, he beholdeth all things in uprightness of heart. So changing one's perception as well as attitude toward what one is seeing when we happen to see things that are not well that can help keep us in singleness of soul and heart 
All right. Continue chapter five, please. Keep therefore my children the law of Elohim, and get singleness, and walk in guile, guilelessness. Not playing the busybody with the business of your neighbor, but love Ahia and your neighbor. Have compassion on the poor and weak. So there we see, brothers, it's essential to in order to get singleness, we have to keep the law of Allahim. This is why we have to make sure we're reading the scriptures and learning the laws and the fruits so that, and walking in it so that we may attain to the singleness and the spirit of guilelessness. That's one of the 12 holy virgins. She is essential for us to attain unto the single-minded person that we seek to be in Christ Yache and not playing the busybody with the business of our neighbors. As we know, even in our walk, we ought to be minding ourselves. And it's essential for us not to be in our neighbor's business, focusing on our own labors, as Issachar talked about how he was a husband and he worked hard. And that working hard was well pleasing to Ahaya and his father, Jacob. And so that we know the things that please Ahaya and our fathers in righteousness. And of course, he, he also said, keep the greatest, the two great commandments, love Ahaya and our neighbor, all right? And having compassion on all is essential for us to get to singleness. In respect, in respect for others, we have to be mindful not to be busy in other people's business. This is essential. The precepts also teach us about this too. Can we read Sirach chapter 21, verse 22 through... 28, please. All right. A foolish man's foot is sown in his neighbor's house. But a man of experience is ashamed of him. This is why we have to be mindful not to be quick to be up in our neighbor's place. All right. Continue, please. A fool will peep in at the door into the house. But he that is well nurtured will stand without. And then we see because the person is not a busybody wanting to be in others business. So if somebody is well nurtured and has some wisdom and has been taught the right thing, we'll stand without. All right. Continue, please. Do you want to give an understanding of what stand without means? Everybody's not right. used to the old text. <laughs> um, if you want to touch on it, I might. My Well, standing without is like. If you're at your neighbor's door, say you knock on the door, you may hear something going on inside. You don't stick your head in there trying to see what's going on, but you stand back and right. don't listen. Try not to listen to what they have going on, not getting involved in their business. Because you came there, you came to speak to the man, you wait peaceably until the man comes out to you. Right. And even, I mean, um, say that you're walking Say you're walking to your your neighbor's door, right? And you're with your neighbor. And your neighbor, you know, like, hold on for a second. You know, he goes into the house to, to do whatever he needs to. And you're standing outside. And the door is maybe cracked or something like that. And you hear something. You don't go and try to peep and get close to the door. And you might walk away. You might walk away from the door for mm -hmm. a little bit. And then wait for him to come out and then walk back up. Like, these are different things. Like, to stand without, like... You're trying to give them that space. Right. Respecting their personal space right. and their dwelling. Right. And can do, speaking of, can verse 24, please. Right. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door. But a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. So that lets us know it's a disgrace to us to sit and listen at try to listen in on somebody's conversation to try to get involved in somebody's business. All right. Continue, please. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. That's essential for us to pay attention to what we're speaking in the last lesson. We closer to the end. We talked about how powerful the tongue is. You can see the person who's a busybody want to be involved in others' business or have something to talk about 
would be doing things like listening at the door, peeping in your peeping in, trying to be all up in their neighbor's business and in their neighbor's house. But the wise, they 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 stand without, they stay out of their neighbor's business and they respect their neighbor's personal space and property, and they are mindful not to disgrace their alahayim by listening to people's business. And then when there is time to talk, they weigh their words in a balance and be mindful of what they're saying so as not to slander anyone because we know a single man of single heart doesn't slander anyone. No censor men's lives. That was something I forgot to mention. Censoring someone's life is being harsh or critical of um, what someone else has going on in their life. And we know that's not our calling because we have to get the beam out of our own eye. All right? Well, a lot of these things leading up to verse 25 uh, of a man is, is quick to be in his neighbor's house or if he's quick to listen at the door. He, he's literally getting the information to go tell other people. Right. <laughs> the lips of talking would right. be telling such things that pertain not unto them. He literally at the door and inside the house because he's going to be talking about talking about you to other people. Whatever you got going on or whatever anybody got going on, he's going and telling other people. So yeah. A real busybody all up in everyone's business. Right. And Continue, please, in verse 26. Excuse me. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. So this one, I think I understand this one. <laughs> the heart of fools is in their mouth, so that whatever's in their heart, they're going to tell it. They can't hold anything in. They, they have to get it all out. All right. But the mouth of the wise is in their heart. They're silent. Right. A few words, but they comprehend much. They're not telling everything that they understand or see or may even feel. That's right. Being mindful because the tongue is a powerful thing. He that offendeth not in word is a perfect man, as we touched on in James at the end of the last lesson. See how let your words be few. And the scriptures actually teach us to do that in the, in the um, admonitions of the books of wisdom like Sirach and Proverbs talking about not being a man of many words. Uh, verse 28, please, of Sirach, chapter 21. A whisper defileth his own soul, and is hated wheresoever he dwelleth. So that is interesting. Coming off of talking about the power of the tongue, now seeing that whispering, being a busybody, it actually defiles us, because these are it's a spirit that's working in us to lead us astray from Allah Hayyam. So may we be admonished through this to know not to fall into being a busybody or a whisperer. And that spirit of slander is a very evil spirit, and it's important to overcome. Can we read the Shepherd of Hermas mandate? This looks like, I can't remember which one this is. I think this is mandate two. Please. Is it mandate two? I can't recall. One moment. Oh, right. Uh, it's either mandate two or three, but only because four was a different one. Sorry about that. Where are all my books? I can look for it. Let me see. Hold on. Monday. I want to say it's mandate two, man. Because one was a mandate one was about faith. I believe it's mandate two because mandate four is about um, divorce. Mandate five is about anger. Mandate six is about the, the angels. Of wickedness and righteousness. There we go. See, mandate. And I don't have the shepherd of Hermas. I have it. This right here. Great. Right. It's mandate two. 
All right, praise the answer. All right. All right, Shepherd of Hermes, Mandate 2, Chapter 1, Verse 1. He saith to me, Keep simplicity and be guileless, and thou shalt be as little children, that know not the wickedness which destroyeth the life of man. That's essential, brothers. Simplicity and guilelessness. We, this is the second time we're hearing guilelessness, so please take the time to look at these definitions to incorporate these spirits in our lives and practicing their works. Continue, please. First of all, speak evil of no man. Neither take pleasure in listening to a slanderer. Amen. Otherwise, thou that hearest too shall be responsible for the sin of him that speaketh the evil. If thou believest the slanderer, which thou hearest. Oh. Mm, so. All right. Well, that we have to be very on guard with that. Because right. we're accountable too if we believe what they're saying. That's why it's good to always have an open line of communication that, that keeps them whispering too and that backbiting among the brethren. If a brother is talking about another brother, he asks him, hey, did you take that to that brother? Did you speak to him about it? All right. Or I ask the brother that, you know, we talked in the last lessons about how I admonish a friend he may not have done it. Like, ask the brother, you know, like, hey, such and such, let's get him involved in this conversation because you're, you know, when you show the slander that you're not into it, it discourages it right. from amongst the brethren. Like, you have to call it out. That's not something that we agree with lest we be responsible for the, the evil speaking as well. That's right. And, and there's a good reason why we have to be mindful not to believe the slander as we continue, please. For in believing it, thou thyself also will have a grudge against thy brother. So, we see what it does. All right. It leads us away from the commandment, the law in Leviticus 19 said, thou shalt not avenge or bear a grudge against thy brother. But the spirit of slander and backbiting will lead to that. All right. Because you're like, I can't believe he did that. You know, like. Right. You'd be offended at the brother not knowing that the brother, if the brother actually even did what the person said. Right. Or if the story was even accurate. Right. Know, the story, could it could have been something totally different, but the way he put the story together to to tell it to you was totally different than what actually happened. So you have to be very on guard. Right. That's why the scripture exhort us uh, not to speak without hearing the cause, hear the whole matter before rebuking or believe in something right. even unless, unless you be responsible for the sin as um, the angel is telling Hermas here. So then shalt thou be responsible for the sin of him that speaketh the evil. Continue read on through, please. Slander is evil. It is a restless demon, never at peace, but always having its home among factions. Hmm. We, we had touched on how can only by pride cometh contention and we see how that contention now we have slander as well this restless demon that helps destroy the peace among the brethren because it enjoys factions it enjoys seeing division and separation right. so we have we know to be mindful of pride and also the spirit of slander so that there can be peace amongst us right. all right continue please we're frying from Refrain from it, therefore, and thou shalt have success at all times with all men. Amen. That's it. Well, we want to be at peace with all men as the scriptures admonish us. So we know avoiding slander would help us attain unto that being an, an example of a believer. And what should we, we put that off of us and what should we clothe ourselves with, brother? 
But clothe thyself in reverence within, in reverence, excuse me. But clothe thyself in reverence wherein is no evil stumbling block. But all things are smooth and glassome. Amen. That reverence for Allah Hayyam, focusing on what's right in his sight, there's no evil stumbling block there. And it will keep us being simplistic and guileless in singleness of heart because Issachar talked about how the single-minded man just waits for the will of Allah Hayyam. Therefore, this will be very helpful for us. Continue, please. He says to me. Oh, verse 1 again. Are you want to read verse 1 again? Yeah, please. <laughs> He saith to me, Keep simplicity and be guileless, and thou shalt be as little children that know not the wickedness which destroys the life of man. And interestingly enough, that's simplicity and guilelessness was explaining the reverence that we're supposed to walk in. That's where the no evil stumbling block is. Be shamefaced according to the word. Let's look at how the scriptures describe the shamefaced man ought to be. Sirach chapter 41 verse 16 and then verse 20 to 24 please. I don't want to ruin it. Do you have unless you be a little children in this lesson? <laughs> no. I okay. don't even know. Actually. Oh good. So I can, I can say remember. it then. <laughs> but you can, you can testify that what um is a car was saying, and also what the shepherd of Hermes is saying is right, because Yache said, unless you be a little children, you will not inherit the kingdom. So they, he was literally talking about being simplistic and guileless. So that definitely helps. Amen. That definitely helps give understanding of what he was saying. Amen. Uh, this is why we're going over these things for the men. So we can get, attain. We want to gotta get it together. Praise God for that. Uh, so Rock chapter forty one verse sixteen. Therefore be shame faced according to my word, for it is not good to retain all shame facedness, neither is it altogether approved in everything. All right. But in these things we have to be Shame face it. Continue, please. This is Sirach. Oh, wait. This, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I apologize. I think I might have said that wrong. Go ahead. If you want to he said is not, he said is, is not altogether approved in everything to be shame face it. So he's going to give the things to be shame face it in and the things not to be shame face it in. Right. Right. Sirach uh, chapter 41, verse 20. And of silence before them that salute thee. So we have to be ashamed to be silent before somebody is telling us hello. So we always have to greet back. All right, continue, please. And to look upon an harlot. There we, now we have to be shamefaced when it comes to looking on harlots. Not, that's something that we would be ashamed to do. Continue, please. And to turn away thy face from thy kinsmen. Right. But that's the compassion we have to walk in as single men. Not, we can't be ashamed. We need to be ashamed to do that. Continue, please. Or to take away a portion or a gift. All right. Because we give a just weight and a just measure. Continue, please. Or to gaze upon another man's wife. That's something we're ashamed to do. Continue, please. Or to be over busy with his maid and come right. not near her bed. And that's important to be ashamed to do that because that is going to lead to fornication. A shame facing man has to be very on guard and stand away from fornication. Continue, please. Or of, up, or of upbraiding speeches before friends. And then when shamefacedness, we have compassion toward one another and we mind our tongue and our speech. Therefore, we wouldn't render an upbraiding speech to a person. That's a, an a shame for us to do. All right. Continue, please. I don't think nobody understands what upbraiding means. Some people might. 
but I'm speaking for the masses. Well, let's get the definition of upbraid. The, the upbraiding means to scold. Right. Basically, it's to find a fault with someone, but it's to essentially you're yelling at them, chastise them, or you're chiding. You know, is when you get upset, when you get frustrated with a person, you might yell or speak with frustration or speak in a demeaning way or condescending way. That's upbraiding. And that's not something we do. That's something we should be ashamed to do. A shame face it, man. All right. Continue, please. And after thou hast given, upbraid not. And also, it's a shame for us to give someone something and then tell them something mean or kind of talk down to them or after doing so. That's not well for us. Or to rub it in their face that you did something for them. Yes. Bring it up. Yeah, I mean, Bring it back up. Like, yo, remember I did that for right. you? Like, yes. That's not the way of the shame-faced man. Continue, please. Or of iterating and speaking again that which thou hast heard. Continue. And of revealing of secrets. So it's a shame for us to tell what someone has told us in confidence. That's the behavior of a shame-faced man. Continue, please. So shalt thou be truly shame-faced and find favor before all men. Amen. So this is essential for us. And also, don't be ashamed in these things. Can you read Sirach chapter 42, verse 1, 2, and then we're going to jump to Sirach chapter 4, please. Okay. Sirach chapter 42, verse 1. Of these things be, thou, be not thou ashamed, and accept no person to sin thereby. Right. Of the law of the Most High and his covenant, and of judgment to justify the unholy. These things don't be ashamed. We cannot be ashamed of the law of the Most High and his covenant. And we cannot be ashamed to be a. We need to be. We cannot be ashamed to speak what's right in judgment, to, no matter who's in front of us. We can't be respecters of persons. So that's what he's talking about, where of judgment to justify the unholy. Right. All right. So if somebody did something that was wrong, you'll be afraid to say something to them because of maybe how you feel about them or who they are or whatever the case may be. All right. Sirach chapter 4, in the realm of not being ashamed, there's more that we have to be mindful of. Can we read Sirach chapter 4, verse 20 to 22, and then 26 to 28, please? All right. Sirach chapter 4, verse 20. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil, and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. Amen. For there is a shame that bringeth sin, and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Accept no person against thy soul, and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. And so there we see that's the shame that bringeth sin, where if we accept a person against our soul, where we be because we have such respect for someone, we would sin so that we wouldn't offend them. That's that respect of persons that will lead us to fall because we don't want to offend that person. This is something to be very mindful of. That's the shame that brings sin. Whereas the shame that brings glory and grace is to not be ashamed to speak the truth in love. And also the shame that brings glory and grace is in number verse 26, please. So Acts chapter 4, verse 26. Be not ashamed to confess thy sins and force not the course of the river. By confessing our sins, we gain mercy from Malahayim, lest the river, which are the, the trouble to come, overtake us. Because if we don't confess it, that river is going to come down on us hard. 
but he that confesses his fault shall find mercy, as the book of Proverbs speaks of. All right, continue, please. Make not thyself an underling to a foolish man, neither accept the person of the mighty. So the person that one chooses to, ha one has over oneself, whether it be one's, um, in the, so we're talking about in the faith. So be mindful of man that you going to get wisdom and understanding from in the righteousness of Allah. Hayyam. Let it not be a foolish man who is not familiar with the word of Allah Hayyam and his covenant. And don't accept the person of the mighty. Don't let the stature of a person or the tenure of a person lead you to be a respect of persons. Instead, he actually said you shall know them by their fruit. Regardless of age, you look for the fruits of the spirit. Regardless of how long they've been studying or whatever, look for the fruits of the Spirit, as Yache says, so that you may know his disciples. All right? Uh, Continue, please. According, oh. according to precept, being prideful is foolish. So if you make yourself an underling to a prideful man who's, in the, who's supposedly in the faith, that, that's against the, the wisdom of Elohim. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Continue when you're ready, please. Strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. There we see we don't give up in this walk. We are not ashamed to get up and continue fighting. As we, we're learning ourselves, we're being shown things that we're doing wrong. There's no shame for us to confess our fault and move forward striving to attain unto the end goal of Christ. And then from what the scripture said, the Lord will fight for us. So may that help us. There's something we have to be mindful of in the singleness and shamefacedness that we seek. We have to beware of the spirit of fornication. Can you read Sirach chapter 42, verse 12 and 13, please? Behold not everybody's beauty and sit not in the midst of women. We remember from the singleness, Issachar talked about shunning eyes made evil through the world. And in that uprightness of heart, it look not, not looking on the beauty of women, lest the mind be corrupted. So we have to be mindful not to be caught up looking in everyone's beauty, nor sitting in the midst of women. All right? Continue, please. For from garments cometh the moth, and from women wickedness. So then we see it's important to, in order to avoid fornication, to not be caught up in women's business and be up in there just hanging out with them. Um, Ruben touched on that when he talked about um, get not involved in women affairs, right? I think we have that scripture in here at some point. Can you read Sirach chapter 9, verse 2 to 9, please? Okay. Sirach chapter 9, verse 2. Give not thy soul unto a woman that set her foot upon thy substance. This is the people that, this is when one is given over to a woman, like completely, one may think one's in love, but it's that infatuation. It's not a good woman, and she's going to take all that you have. Right. right. This is not a good woman, of course, because that would do that to you. All right, continue, please. Meet not within harlot, lest thou fall into her snares. All right, continue, please. Use not much the company of women that is a singer, lest thou be taken with her attempts. All right, so you have to be mindful of women that may be singers or thing, anything that, some form of entertainment that they can seduce you by. You have to be mindful not to make much company with her unless she be gotten with her attempts. Continue, please. I want to clarify that. We're not talking about just a woman who can sing, okay? We're talking about a woman who's operating as a harlot who who has abilities. Like she can sing very well or or even sing her um I think when I looked up the, the definition of the word, it was interesting. It wasn't just a 
a, a, a singer. Yeah, of course. It, it's not literally, oh, that woman can sing, don't go near her. It's she's actually trying to seduce the man from what the scripture is showing. So right. you have to be mindful of what spirit the woman is in. Because this chapter is referring to harlots, actually, we talked about in verse three, he said it right before. So they have the spirit of fornication really working in them. Hence, you have to be mindful because her singing ability, if she's in fornication or seeking to ensnare you into fornication, her singing ability is going to be another snare for you to fall to her attempts. So it's definitely not just if a woman can sing, you can't have any company with her. Right. <laughs> uh, so right, nine and five. Gaze not on a maid, that I fall not by those things that are precious in her. Notice the word is gaze not. It's not a transgression to see somebody that's to see a person, but to sit there gazing or gawking, you know, and now being enamored with the person, that is going to lead to a defilement of the heart. Continue, please. Give not thy soul unto heartless, that thou lose not thine inheritance. Now, that helps explain the woman in verse 2, where it said, Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. So the woman, if it's, it's not a good woman, you give her your soul, whether she's going to cause you to lose everything you have. All right? Continue, please. Look not round about thee in the streets of the city, neither wander thou in the solitary place thereof. That lets us know when we're walking somewhere, we're in the store, wherever we're going, the spirit that's leading to look all around and get a look at everything that's around us is a spirit of fornication, trying to get the view of the women that are there. That's why he's admonishing us that when we go where we're going, be about our business. We'll take care of what we have to take care of and do not go into solitary places because it's going to tend into something bad. All right? Continue, please. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty. Why must we do so? For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman for herewith love is kindled at the fire. So it's the God our souls from fornication, why we must turn our eye away from a beautiful woman and look not upon another's beauty. All right? Verse 9, please. Sit not at all with another man's wife, nor sit down with her in thine arms, and spend not thy money with her at the wine. It's important. And you can't. You have to be mindful of the wine, because the testament of Judah tell how wine it's a minister to fornication, so it's going to cause you to fall. Continue, please. Least thine heart incline unto her, and so through thy desire thou fall into destruction. Man, you have to be very mindful. Notice to have gotten to the point where you're sitting with her at the wine, it was through our own desire to have gotten us into that position. Right. So we have to, when it comes to another man's wife, we sit not at all with another man's wife, nor have any, getting any physical contact with her sitting there. That's not wise for us by any means. It's a trespass against our neighbor because that's his flesh and his body. That's right. Can we read Testament of Reuben, chapter 3, verse 8? Looks like verse 9 and 10, please, because there's more understanding of what how we are to operate when it comes to another man's wife. Please. Uh, Testament of Reuben, chapter 3, verse 8. And now, my children, love the truth, and it will preserve you. Hear ye the words of Reuben, your father. Pay no heed to the face of a woman, nor associate with another man's wife, nor meddle with affairs of womankind. These are essential for us to overcome fornication, as Reuben is talking about. Nor associate with another man's wife. 
the word associate means to connect someone or something with something else in one's mind or to join with in a common purpose. So we're not to get so affiliate, get involved with another man's wife, joining them in something like, let's do this together. Right. Nor even, and even in mind, it was interesting to say, connect someone or something with something else in one's mind. So even in our thoughts, we are not to have a, even have a thought of another man's wife. So we have to be mindful against this to make sure we don't fall to the spirit of fornication. Right. And with that, we also have to pay no heed to the face of a woman that ties back into not beholding the beauty of women. We have to pay attention that not to get caught up in a woman's face. That's why he said, pay no heed to the face of a woman. Right. And not meddle in the affairs of womankind. And that ties into not sitting in the midst of women and also not being up in women's business. That's their thing. Of course, your wife, that's your wife. That's your flesh. Right. That's your family business. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about women that are not in your household. Right. Testament of Reuben. That was Testament of Reuben chapter 3, verse, about verse 8 to 10, somewhere there. Now we're in Reuben chapter 4, verse 1, please. All right. Pay no heed, therefore, my children, to the beauty of women. Nor set your mind on their affairs, but walk in singleness of heart in the fear of the higher. Notice he touched, he said it, he said it again. Pay no heed to the beauty of women, nor set our mind on their affairs. It, it starts within the mind. This overcoming fornication is a process of getting our mind in the right place and paying attention to where our mind is. Because you may get to thinking about one thing and fornication is just setting you up to get you in the wrong thought concerning that woman, right? It's very important not to pay heed to the beauty of women nor their affairs. And these are, we went into, we gone into fornication because in order to be shamefaced and single, these are things we have to overcome. Because right. Reuben even said it, walk in singleness of heart in the fair of Ahaya. In focusing on singleness of heart, it leads us not to pay heed to the beauty of women by not looking on their beauty, lest our minds get polluted. This is what Issachar had explained the single of heart person does. Can you read that verse again? Testament of Issachar chapter 4, verse 4, please. For he looketh not on the beauty of women, lest he should pollute his mind with corruption. That's important for us. And let's finish getting the admonition from Reuben on what we all also ought to do along with this singleness of heart. Please, in chapter 4, verse 1, read the rest of it. All right. But walk in singleness of heart in the fear of Ahiah, and expend labor on good works, and on study, and on your flocks, until Ahiah give you a wife whom he will, that ye suffer not as I did. So in that singleness, just as Issachar was a husbandman, we have to expend our labor on good works, doing the works of Allah Hayim. That's why we have to be studying the scriptures, learning the laws, learning the fruits, and practicing in our life. That's why our energy is to be focused on. So we focus on our labor on good works, on study, and on our jobs. When speaking of our flocks, that's the way we take care of our families. These are the things we focus on, waiting on Ahaya to give us a wife whom he will, so that way we know that the relationship we get into, that marriage is actually Allah's will, and it will be a woman that's good for our growth right. and for our salvation and theirs, so that we don't get in a bad, in the wrong relationship, doing things out of our own desire. We, we have to walk with a, also to overcome fornication, we also have to walk with a view of compassion toward those who struggle with fornication, lest the spirits array themselves against us for looking down on those who are struggling. When we don't, we're going to see from Judah, he explained this, how not having compassion on another person's shortcoming will cause the spirit of fornication to work, to turn and work against us. And we can apply that to anything that 
lack of compassion causes those evil spirits to find place in us. Uh, this is Testament of Judah, chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, and about verse 6 to 8, please. All right. Testament of Judah, chapter 12, verse 1. And now I command you, my children, hearken to Judah your father, and keep my saying to perform all the ordinances of Ahiah, and to obey the commands of Elohim. And walk not after your lust, nor in the imaginations of your thoughts and haughtiness of heart. And glory not in the deeds and strength of your youth, for this also is e evil in the eyes of Ahiah. Since I also glorified that in wars no comely woman's faith ever enticed me. And reproved Reuben, my brother, concerning Bilhah, the wife of my father. The spirits of jealousy and of fornication arrayed themselves against me, until I lay with Bethshua the Canaanite, and Tamar, who was espoused to my sons. There we see how his lack of, he didn't have, he was glorying in what he, in the strength that he had, but when it came to women, and therefore, and didn't have compassion on Reuben, his brother, then the spirit of fornication turned and worked against him to get him to fall, since he didn't have compassion for his brother. And continue verse six, please. And he got high minded. He got high minded yes. like it doesn't affect me. Like, I'm. Like, I don't have an issue with that. Like, I don't know what you're doing. That's pride. The pride. Enter the pride allowed it to enter in. Mm -hmm. So explaining that. Uh, this so is. Be, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was gonna say so. Be mindful of pride as well to avoid the spirit of fornication. All right. Continue, please. Uh, Testament of Judas, chapter twelve, verse six. And the wine turned aside my eyes, and pleasure blinded my heart. And I became enamored of, and I lay with her, and transgressed the commandment of Ahiah, and the commandment of my fathers, and I took her to wife. Right, you're talking about best shoe of the Canaanite for everyone. Oh, yes. So we went into this is to see how lack of compassion, and now knowing pride, can cause a spirit of fornication to enter into us and work in us. Also, we went here to see how going about things the wrong way, seeking a wife of our, of our own through our own desires and our own view, that will get us in a bad relationship as it got Judah in. And he will a higher rewarded him as he's going to tell here. And the higher rewarded me according to the imagination of my heart and as much as I had no joy in her children. So through Judah's example, we see that he said he pleasure blinded his heart and he became enamored with her. So we see we were given the commandments not to behold the beauty of women, not to take pay no heed to a woman's face or pay no heed to the beauty of women. These commandments are to help us not get overcome by fornication. But if we give if we give in to the desire and that pleasure of mind by gazing upon the beauty of a woman. It's going to lead us to do something according to our own imagination. And we get into a relationship that was not according to the will of Allah Hayyam, And it'll be tough. So these admonitions about avoiding fornication are also to help us prevent from getting into the wrong situation with a person. And also, if you're already in a relationship, by avoiding the spirit of fornication, it'll help you walk uprightly with your sister, to treat your wife as a sister and not have a view of fornication. Well, you can't not, when I say to not view her as just a person for intimacy, but to also view her as a sister, to see her in uprightness of heart. Right. Hopefully that makes sense. Continuing in Testament of Reuben, chapter 4, verse 7 to 11, please. All right. For many have fornication destroyed, because through, because though a man be old or noble or rich or poor, he bringeth reproach upon himself with the sons of men and derision with Belier. Right. It doesn't matter who we are. 
fornication can get us if we're not attentive. Continue, please. For ye heard regarding Joseph, how he guarded himself from a woman, and purged his thoughts from all fornication, and found favor in the sight of Elohim and men. Notice he purged his thoughts. It, overcoming fornication starts in the mind. All right. All right. Continue, please. For the Egyptian woman did many things unto him, and summoned magicians, and offered him love potions. But the purpose of his soul admitted no evil desire. Therefore the Elohim of your fathers delivered him from every evil and hidden death. For if fornication overcomes not your mind, neither can Belial overcome you. So that may not be helpful for us to understand where this battle lies in regards to fornication. All right. It's a growing process to have a pure mind in love. Joseph had to overcome it in his mind through his trials. He prayed a lot and strove within himself to not give in to the thoughts in his mind, sometimes with tears even in hopes of being delivered. Keeping the commands to abstain from fornication and thinking the right thoughts will eventually lead to being able to see a woman as a person rather than look upon her with a view to lust. Can you read Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 and 28, please? You have heard that it was said of, by them of old, excuse me, you have heard that it was said by them of old time, that I shall not commit adultery. But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery with her already in his heart. So we have to be mindful of these things. And Yache was helping us see that the issue really is within our heart right. and our minds, the intent of what we're doing. So we have to be very mindful of intent and pay attention to what's going on within us to overcome this. And we need a pure mind to overcome fornication. Can you read Testament of Benjamin chapter 8, verse 2 and 3, please? He that hath a pure mind and love looketh not after a woman with a view to fornication. For he hath no defilement in his heart, because the spirit of Allah resteth upon him. So that lets us know if we look to a woman with a view to fornication, there's still a defilement in our heart. And we have to confess that fault and pray for deliverance. But may actually strengthen us to get to the place where there's no defilement in our heart, because then we know it's the spirit of Allah that's resting upon us, that's delivering us from that view to fornication. Continue, please. For as the sun is not defiled by shining on dung and myrrh, but rather dried up both and driveth away the evil smell, so also the pure mind, through encomp though encompassed by the defilements of earth, rather cleanses them, and is not itself defiled. Then we see when the Holy Spirit of Allah is with us, then those thoughts, those views, those thoughts that would lead to a, a view to fornication, the spirit will purge it with the right thought, with the what's according to the will of Allah within our minds so that our view and our outlook on the world would be in righteousness. And that would help. This brings us to the single mind or the single to be a single-minded person because remember Issachar mentioned how he views all things with uprightness of heart. These are the works of the spirit of Allah Hayyam. All right. It takes patience in well-doing and keeping the commandments to receive the spirit to have no defilement in our hearts. Can you read Sirach chapter 1 verse 26 please? If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the Lord shall give her unto thee. This is what we have to do to get the Holy Spirit, keeping the commandments. As we focus on keeping the law, eventually the Holy Spirit will renew us as children that the kingdom may come. Second Clement chapter 12, verse 1 to 6, please. Second Clement chapter 12, verse 1. Let us therefore await the kingdom of Elohim betimes, 
and love and righteousness. Since we know not the day of Elohim's appearing. Read on through. For the Lord himself, being asked by a certain person when his kingdom would come, said, When the two shall be one, and the outside as the inside, and the male with the female, neither male or female. We'll continue here. He's going to go into that. Yeah, he's going into something deep. <laughs> now, the two, <laughs> now the two are one when we speak truth among ourselves. And in two bodies there shall be one soul without dissimulation. Right, so speaking truth is helping bring about the kingdom. Speaking truth amongst ourselves. Continue, please. And by the outside, as the inside, he meaneth this. By the inside, he meaneth the soul, and by the outside, the body. Therefore, in like manner, as they, as they body appeareth, so also let thy soul be manifest by its good works. All right, so our soul needs to have good works in it and our body needs to exemplify those good works so we have to see the goodness on the outside that's within us that will bring about the kingdom continue please and by the male with the female neither male nor female he meaneth this that a brother seeing a sister should have no thought of her as a female and that a sister seeing a brother should, have, should not have any thought of him as a male. Continue, please. These things, if ye do, saith he, the kingdom of my father shall come. So that's, as we see in the building of the faith, a person might start off, you descriptive. In overcoming fornication, it talks about pay no heed to the face of a woman. Behold not the beauty of women. You know, you, you, you're you avoiding it. You, you have to look away to help protect your mind. And as you grow, then you, as the mind becomes purified by keeping the commandments, eventually, when you see a woman, there won't be a view to fornication. And then, as we grow, Yahweh working in us and the Spirit being with us, eventually, we would just see a person. We wouldn't even see male or female. So you can see how it's a growing process to attain unto the kingdom of Allah. I am. All right. Amen. So, the end goal of our labor in the Lord is to overcome these things. And let's be encouraged to do so. Can you read Second Clement 13, verse 1 to 4, and chapter 14, verse 1, please. Second Clement chapter 13, verse 1. Therefore, brethren, let us repent forthwith. Let us be sober unto that which is good. For we are full of much folly and wickedness. Let us wipe away from us our former sins. And let us not be found to be men pleasers. Neither let us desire to please one another only, but also those men that are without. By Man. sorry. No, you're okay. You want to go ahead? I was just really telling the truth. It's not just about pleasing the brethren. We also have to be at peace with those that are without. So we have to do all things well. All right. By our righteousness. That the name be not blasphemed by reason of us. Right. And it's through our righteousness we please them with or without. We don't do things that are unrighteous to please them. Right. So keep that in mind. Brothers, continue, please. For the Lord saith, Every way my name is blasphemed every way my name is blasphemed among all the Gentiles. And again, woe unto him by reason of whom my name is blasphemed. Continue. You want to get Paul so they understand that? Um. Therefore, if if I if I sin, am I making Allah the minister of sin? 
That's a good verse. All right. What's that in the book of um I think that's I don't even remember. I think it's Romans chapter three. Yeah. No, 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 it's Galatians when he was talking with Peter. Is Elohim therefore the minister of sin? Nope. I can't remember it. Sorry. You fishing for that? My eSword is on my <laughs> on my other phone. And I can't move at the moment because uh, I'm recording. That's one. There's one in Galatians and there's also another one in Romans that you were talking about. Because uh, okay. he, he said if if the one in Romans he was talking about if he was talking about his lie that if he be lying then he make us if if the the gospel be told be glorified in my lie then do I make it Elohim the minister of sin you know and then that's the okay. other one in Galatians that you're talking about okay um. Uh, the one in Galatians, it says, uh, Galatians 2 and 15, We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by works of the law, but by the faith in Yahweh Christ, even we have believed in Yahweh Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, and therefore Christ the minister of sin, Elohim forbid. That was the key part right there. Right. We can't be found sinners, else we'll make it look like Christ is the minister of sin. Right. And that's how the na his name would be blasphemed among the Gentiles. And that's all for what he said. That's why Clement was exhorting us, let us repent forthwith and let us be sober unto that which is good. For we are all, we are full of much folly and wickedness. Let us wipe away from us our former sins and let us not be found to be men pleasers. Neither let us desire to please one another only, but also those men that are without by our righteousness, that the name be not blasphemed by reason of us. So we have to work righteousness that the name be not blasphemed. All right? And Thank you, you for that. You called the other one in Romans chapter 3 too. Um, <laughs> it says, yeah, uh, Romans chapter 3, I'm going to start at 1. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of Elohim. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of Elohim without effect? Elohim forbid. Yea, let Elohim be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that thou mayest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Now here it goes. It says, But if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of Elohim, what shall we say? Is Elohim unrighteous who taketh vengeance? I speak as a man. Elohim forbid. For then how shall Elohim judge the world? For if the truth of Elohim hath more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why yet am I also judged as a sinner? And not rather, as we be slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. So any concept of, you know, continuing in sins and will be rewarded after, right. it's not the gospel of Allah. And we said, if my unrighteousness commend the righteousness of Allah, can you read that part again, please? That verse right there. Sure. He said, "But if but if our unrighteousness commend the righteousness of Elohim, what shall we say? Is Elohim oh. unrighteous who taketh vengeance?" He's showing that that the we if we're being unrighteous and trying to boast about Elohim's righteousness, how? 
Allah, then that would make it unrighteous for Allah Hayyam to judge us because right. he's judging us by the law, the very law that we're breaking. And that's what he's like. That it doesn't Allah, work like that. Allah Hayyam forbid. For then how shall Allah Hayyam judge the world? Like it's right. It just doesn't make sense. It has right. It has to be by righteousness that we commend his righteousness because then that would testify that he's going to judge the world according to righteousness right that we would be truly representing him and the gospel and not blaspheme in his name so we cannot do evil that good may come right allah I forbid that right and clement explains well in, uh, we go back to Second Clement 13, verse 2 to 4, please. All right. For the Lord saith, Every way my name is blasphemed among all the Gentiles. And again, woe unto him by reason of whom my name is blasphemed. Wherein is it blasphemed? And that ye do not the things which I desire. That's how we blaspheme the name. Continue, please. For the Gentiles... When they hear from our mouth the oracles of Allah, marvel at them for their beauty and greatness. Then, when they discover that our works are not worthy of the word which we speak, forthwith they betake themselves to blasphemy, saying that it is an idle story and a delusion. This is why we have to get the beam out of our eye, become single-minded, and be shamefaced, because when we talk about the word of Allah, it's going to sound good, but as soon as they see that our works are not worthy of what we're speaking, they're going to blaspheme the name and say we're just, we're out of, we're, it's a delusion. It's, it's an it's, idle story because uh, it's impossible. Right. <laughs> right. Like, they see if it was so true, why aren't you doing it? Right. That's the thing. If you believe so much, where's your works to show your faith? This is how they would mock us. If Allah ain't working so heavily, how why is he not working in you? Why is he not why are you you're saying that this Allah is so powerful, he's so mighty, he 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 walks in all these powerful fruits and and walks in this great law and then he doesn't have the power to make you do it. This is how the name is blasphemed when we don't walk uprightly. And this is why it's important to take the time to get the beam out of our eye, learn the gospel, walk in it, and go about our business in meekness, in silence, so that we learn to set the example first before speaking and setting a stumbling block before our brother through our hypocrisy. All right. All right. Continue, please. In chapter 13, verse 4. For when they hear from us that Allah saith. It is no thank you. Excuse me. It is no thank unto you, if you love them that love you. But this is thank unto you, if you love your enemies and them that hate you. When they hear these things, I say they marvel at their exceeding goodness. But when they see that we not only do not love us, they laugh us to scorn, and the name is blasphemed. They see that we're not doing what we're talking about. We're not doing what the word says. They will laugh at us. All right. So this is why we have to be mindful. Continue in right. chapter 14, verse 1, please. Right. It, says, it says we shall love our enemies. And he said that if, if you can't even love your brother, how are you going to love your enemy? Like, it just... Yeah. It just we're sure to be, it'll make us, it'll really make it look like it's an idle story. Right. Because we're saying all these great things, but then in our works, is like, like you just mentioned, you, it doesn't add up. Right. You can't even love your own brother, but you're talking about love your enemy too. <laughs> it's a joke. It'll cause them to laugh. So this is why we have to really take the time to get to that place to actually love our enemies and our brothers in truth. So that the words we speak will actually be true, even from our own hearts. So that we can be true witnesses of the truth of Allah. Okay. Verse 4, chapter 14, verse 1, please. I want to 
Second Clement chapter 14, verse 1. Wherefore, That's brethren, right. wherefore, brethren, if ye do the will of Elohim, our Father, we shall be the first church, which is spiritual, which was created before the sun and the moon. But if we do not the will of Ahiah, we shall be of the scripture that saith, My house was made a den of robbers. So therefore, let us choose rather to be the church of life, that we may be saved. Amen. Amen. So let's be mindful to do the will of our Father, Ahiah Ahiah. And hope this was edifying to understand how to be single, shamefaced, and not blaspheme the name of our Allah Hayyam. Uh, anything else, Zakwa? I think it was pretty concrete. Praise Allah Hayyam. All right. Amen. It was, um, I hope I explained that thing well about when it comes to a man with his wife and how to view her as a sister. It was right. Well, and, I understood. Okay. I understood it. Okay. It was, it bad. Okay. All right. May Allah high and prosper you all. I hope uh, everybody takes these things and really considers them and really meditates on them so that we all may be strengthened in Allah high and the Holy Spirit may work in us. So I um, keep you all. I bless you and may he set his face upon you and be gracious unto you. Salam. Salam.